High nitrates are bad for your tank for two reasons. They can damage corals and they can cause nuisance algae. I'm Matthew, your beginner guru, and I'm gonna teach you how to lower nitrates safely and effectively. Low levels of nitrate aren't bad at all. In fact, they're quite good, and I usually shoot for a range of three to five parts per million in all of my tanks. But as those nitrate levels slowly start to creep up towards 20 or 30 parts per million, it can start having a negative effect on your corals. I don't want to get into the nitty gritty in this video, but there are some reefers who have high nutrient systems with crazy high nitrates and phosphates and who do it successfully, but that's a topic for another video. By far and away, the most common and annoying problem associated with high nitrates is nuisance algae growth. There's a reason why fertilizer for your plants and for your lawns contains nitrates because nitrates help your plants grow. The exact same is true for algae in your tank. High amounts of fertilizer or NO3 nitrate will cause your algae to take off. By far the biggest cause of nitrates in your tank will be fish food and fish waste. Yes, dying livestock can also be a cause of nitrate spikes, but hopefully you're gonna be watching your tank and notice when a fish dies and remove them before it has a chance to break down. The best way to nip NO3 spikes in the bud is frequent water testing. Whenever I'm setting up a new system, the day I add the first livestock, I start testing for nitrate every three to four days. What happens is a new tank needs to settle into its nitrogen cycle, so there's gonna be a lot of fluctuation, especially in those first few weeks. On top of all that, with the introduction of fish comes fish food and fish waste, which means you're gonna be introducing NO3 or nitrate to your tank. By testing for nitrate every three to four days, you can quickly notice any nitrate spikes before they get too high and take measures to combat them. Once my tank settles in a bit and I'm comfortable with the nitrate levels, I will start testing for nitrates every one to two weeks. But anytime there is a change with the addition of new livestock, I will revert back to my more frequent testing schedule and test for nitrates every three to four days. My nitrate levels are spiking, now what? As long as you keep up with your nitrate testing, you're gonna notice as your nitrate levels start to spike. Let's take you step by step from simple to complex to turn the tide on nitrate spikes. The first line of attack is to reduce feeding. It is way more common to overfeed than it is to underfeed. So just try to reduce how much food you feed every day. If that isn't enough, the second step is to change the type of food that you feed. Chances are you're relying on pellet and flake food because they're really easy to feed but they're also really easy to overfeed, which can cause nitrate spikes. Changing all or part of their diet to frozen food will definitely help. Maybe start by switching out one of the feedings with frozen Hikari Mysa shrimp each day, and if that doesn't seem to help enough, then switch out two of the feedings with Mysa shrimp. Step three is to up your mechanical filtration. This won't technically remove nitrate from the water column, but it will help remove fish food and fish waste before it has a chance to break down into nitrate. If you currently change your filter sock or sponge once a week, then maybe try changing it every three to four days instead. And if you don't have a protein skimmer, now's the time to add one to your tank. Well, we've covered the first three simple steps for reducing nitrate in your tank, and now we're gonna move on to a few more complex ideas. Step number four are macroalgae refugiums, Cato reactors, and algae scrubbers. All of them basically work in the same way. By growing some sort of algae in another part of your tank, it will consume nitrates in the water column. And then when it comes time to harvest the macroalgae, you will effectively be removing nitrate as well. Macroalgae refugiums can be created in a compartment in the sump or as a separate hang on the back option. Algae scrubbers are placed near a sump, sometimes mounted right above the sump, and will require a little plumbing know-how. While Cato reactors are basically really large GFO or carbon reactors, but instead of putting GFO or carbon inside, you put in macroalgae and you wrap lights around the whole thing. Chances are by this point you beat back your nitrate spike, but what if your nitrates are still climbing? Well, step five, we have now entered the realm of sugar dosing, vodka dosing, carbon dosing, and bio pellets, but these are really complicated and a topic for another video. But what about just doing water changes to alleviate your nitrate spikes? Well, the reality is 
they just don't work very well. If you have 10 parts per million nitrate in your tank, a 10% water change will remove one part per million, so you're still left with nine ppm. To really make water changes effective at removing nitrates for your tank, you would need to do much larger water changes more frequently. And water changes won't address the underlying issues that are causing the nitrate problems in the first place. So it's really just a band-aid. Did you know that setting up a macroalgae refugium will not only help reduce nitrate from your tank, but will also help defeat diatoms and feed your livestock? Click here to see why setting up a macroalgae refugium is a great idea for you. And as always, everyone, thanks for watching. Happy reefing. Be well. We'll see you next time.